Hey everybody, this is Chris from Seawolf Studios. We're gonna take a look at working with multi-timbral instruments in Logic Pro X. First off, a multi-timbral instrument is a software instrument plugin that allows for multiple MIDI inputs and discrete stereo or mono audio outputs. And the thing that's great about multi-timbral instruments is they allow for greater CPU efficiency. You can have 16 instruments loaded up into just one instance of a plugin rather than having to have 16 instances of that same plugin. Um, Contact by Native Instruments is the one I'm going to be working with today, though the rules apply to any multi-timbral software instrument. So uh, first thing we want to do is create a software instrument track and check multi-timbral. And again, you can have up to 16. Um, and when I click create, it creates 16 tracks, though all of these tracks service the same instrument instance. So if you notice, they're all called instrument one. And as I scroll through them here and pop open the track information area, look right here, MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, and so on, all the way down to 16. So Logic has automatically created 16 tracks that feed into one instrument instance. So now I'm gonna load up contact and I want to create an instance of contact that has multiple stereo outputs. So I'm gonna use this one right here, multi-output 16 stereo outputs. And now that that's loaded up, um, it's loaded up for all my instruments here. So I'm gonna go over and load up some instruments from this library that I have here. This is the First Call Horns Library by Big Fish Audio. And it has a collection of saxophones, trumpets, trombones, stuff like that. So let me load up some instruments. I'm gonna create an alto sax and you'll notice it loaded up to receive from MIDI channel one and it's outputting to stereo one. Then let me go in and create a tenor sax. Receiving from MIDI channel two, automatically um, contact loaded it up that way. Of course, I could change that to be from any input. It's outputting to the same stereo output as the alto sax. So that's something that we will change in a moment. Baritone sax on channel three. And I certainly don't need to load up 16 to give you an idea. So let me just load up one more and we'll have four. All right, so we've got alto sax, tenor sax, baritone sax, trumpet. And um, these are receiving from MIDI channels one, two, three, and four. So I only need four instrument tracks. Let me delete these. And it is extraordinarily helpful to name your tracks. Now, um, let's take a listen. That is alto sax, tenor sax, baritone sax. Then let's check the trumpets. That is, uh, that's all you need to do to take care of the MIDI routing into the instrument. Now, um, all of these instruments are on one stereo output. So the problem with that is I can't really mix them independently. If I wanted to lower the volume of one without lowering the volume of the others or pan one without panning the others, or maybe I want to apply separate EQ to all of these instruments, I'm going to have some problems with that. Um, first off, just if you want to do a rough mix with volume and panning, you can do that right in contact. But that sort of, uh, that sort of takes away from um, the sophistication of Logic's mixing board. Um, so what I really want to do is put these on separate stereo outputs. So contact has this great option right here in the outputs area, which I enabled right there. 
And in batch functions, right here, clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. That is quite a mouthful of a command, but if I do that, it automatically um, routes these to separate stereo outputs here. And it names them based on the track that's loaded up. So alto sax is on one, two, tenor sax is on three, four, barry is on five, six, trumpet is on seven, eight. Now that I've done that, I need to create auxiliary tracks in Logic to capture the audio output from these different instruments. Uh, so here's how that works. In the mixer, this is the contact instrument. Now, because I created an instance of contact that has multiple audio outputs, Logic automatically gave me this add auxiliary track button. So when I hit that, it creates a stereo aux track that's receiving audio from contacts three, four output. So let me hit that a couple times and you'll notice now I've got contact three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is a beautiful thing. Uh, now, what that means is that the original contact instrument is going to be the alto sax. And the next one will be tenor sax baritone, trumpet. So that is all you need to do to, um, to take care of the routing. Now I have independent audio tracks so I can load up separate EQ, I can mix them separately and so on. So let me put some MIDI on these tracks and, um, and then we'll take a look at some rough mixing. Okay, so I've got a four part harmony going on on these four tracks, just a very basic voice leading thing. First of all, quick little shortcut command, shift option N changes my region names to the name of the track. So that can be really helpful. Um, so in the arrange window here, these are still these MIDI channels are all routed to the same instrument. So I have very little flexibility with muting and soloing as you can see here. So what I need to do is um, I can solo and mute these tracks independently in the mixer here. Um, so if you wanted that capability inside the arrange window, you have to create tracks for these auxiliary channel strips. Now that also goes for if you want to have automation on these tracks, if you want to have the volume come up and down, or if you want to automate anything on those tracks, you have to create, um, you have to create something in the arrange window for those. So I can select these tracks, right click on them and say create track. And uh, this, it gets to be messy because you unfortunately now need to have two tracks for everything. You can create a track stack for each of these pairs. You can select them and right click and do create track stack, shift command D. A folder track just groups them together so you can minimize them and get them out of the way. A summing stack actually creates a submix of those tracks so that you can apply effects and set up sends and all that stuff um, for all the tracks inside the stack. For this situation, I just need something simple like a folder stack. So I'll hit create and I can name this tenor sax and I can now have um, independent mute and solo capabilities on that track. At any rate, now if I wanna do um, a rough mix of this, I can pan these out. Maybe I want alto sax sort of over on the left side and the trumpet sort of over on the right side here. Let me solo these two. then I can certainly adjust volume accordingly.
And now I have complete mixing capability of all of these tracks.